They thrive just as well among the bricks and mortar of a town. Keep them clean and well fed, and pigeons will thrive anywhere. Nest boxes like those at the back should be provided, and each sitting consists of two eggs. After one day sitting, the shape of the young bird can be seen in the shell. At the end of three days, the heart is already beating down below in the middle. After 19 days, the baby bird begins to break through the shell, sticking out its tongue in frantic efforts to get free. At length, a large piece of shell is broken off. Then a head comes out, followed closely by a foot, and the squeaker, as a young pigeon is called, blindly wonders what sort of world this may be. At three days old, the babies are still blind and covered with yellow down. After a fortnight, the down is re -tethers. At this tender age, spurs already have the homing instinct and, if taken from their nest, immediately go back. The parents are kept busy gathering up food which they half digest and then push down the throats of the family. It seems a rough and ready way of feeding, but the squeakers evidently like it. Before it grows any more, the squeaker should be ringed. On its leg is placed a metal ring marked with a number that is registered in the name of the owner. If the ring is cut, the bird loses its identification and is of no further use for racing. At six weeks old, the young birds are fully fledged. Among the points of a good racer are the pinion feathers, which should be long. The two middle tail feathers ought to overlap when the tail is closed. Early in life, the young bird should be accustomed to the training basket and should learn to feed while in it. If this training is neglected, when the birds are sent away for a race, they will be excited, hungry or thirsty at the start, and unable to fly well. To train them for racing, they should be taken a short way from home and released for a practice flight. flights should gradually increase in length until the youngsters are ready for their first race. There are many kinds of racing clocks, but this is a usual pattern with three paper dials for hours, minutes and seconds. The one for the seconds is being put on now. Clocks belonging to members of a racing pigeon club are set by a master clock so that at the same time as nearly as possible. Once the clock is set and closed, it cannot be opened or altered in any way. On the day appointed before the race, members of the club bring their birds to be marked. Each marker 
has in front of him a number of rubber race rings on slips of paper, ring and paper bearing the same number, which is written in a book against the competitor's name. Inside the paper is a secret number, corresponding with one inside the ring. This device of double numbering prevents any tampering with the rings. The birds have the ring fixed on by a simple machine which stretches the rubber. And in important races, the number is stamped on the wing as well. The birds are now placed in baskets and sent in the care of a convoyer to the starting point. So important is thing that the railways run special pigeon trains. Before the race, the pigeons are watered and fed if necessary. All the fastenings of every basket are now undone except one string which holds up the center. At a given signal, the strings are cut and all the birds are released at practically the same time. A slow motion view of a release is interesting because it shows clearly how the birds lean backwards in order to rise quickly. Some pigeons seem to beat the air to little purpose, while others make definite progress with each wing stroke. None have any doubt as to direction, and soon all are vanished into the sky. The owners know roughly when to effect them and keep out. Every second is 